Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Divine Debut 11. This is Kathy speaking. I hope that you're all doing well. Welcome to your Twin Flame Soulmate or Karmic Connection Love Reading that we do every Wednesday here on Divine Debut 11. Thank you so much for your love, your support, your likes, your shares and your subscriptions and a special thank you to our patrons um, who help support this channel. This is a premiere, live premiere, so we're in the chat with you, we can chat with you, I'm there um, today on the 21st of August of 2024. Now this is a love reading in these very challenging times where the astrology is concerned. Um, just after a full moon in Aquarius. Now, Venus, the goddess of love, value, peace, justice, fairness in love is transiting through Virgo. So she's a little bit stingy right now. She's a little bit discerning and more practical. And uh, we've had some doors closed, some limitations, some feelings of maybe loss or cold feelings where love is concerned, detached feelings, needing to sort of take a step back and look at things maybe through a more practical lens relative to this, um, this magical connection that you're here um, looking, answers, looking for the answers um, on this magical, um, difficult, long-standing, forever challenging uh, love connection, whether it's involving other people or it's timing relative to Kronos, Saturn, which is about maturity. Remember Venus recently just, she opposed Saturn. So she came into Virgo and she's like a full moon uh, looking right across at Saturn. So there's something that's culminating, something that's been showing us where maybe the changes need to happen because Uranus, Uranus transiting through Taurus, the fixed earth sign, the more, the most fixed sign of all, um, that's where Uranus is transiting and Uranus has been squaring off to this full moon in Aquarius. Remember Uranus rules Aquarius and where the fixed signs are concerned, so Taurus, Scorpio, Leo and Aquarius, where there's been the inability for change, maybe Uranus will bring those tower moments, those releasing, those unpredictable um, changes that we've been hoping for. Um, of course, Saturn is about something long-term. Saturn in Pisces is about seeing the truth. There's a dissolving of the boundaries as well, where there... We could say dissolving of the boundaries because Saturn being in Pisces is in the house of where we can get lost. Get lost out there in the ethers, get lost in the dream. Saturn is like the wake up call, it's the reality check. But Saturn can also help us build because he's the building blocks relative to the dream. So it will be different for each of us. But right now on this full moon, two days ago in Aquarius, and very, you know, enlightening, I should say, but energetically feeling very, very, um, maybe even a, fe a sense of loss, feeling as though it's something is not possible, right? I feel that's only a, a tester um, as Venus, as I said, in opposition to Saturn, um, Venus from Virgo and Saturn in opposition in Pisces, right? And they're connecting, they both connected with Jupiter and Mars. So we had Mars, right, the masculine energy squaring off to the feminine. So Mars, the masculine, squaring off to Venus, the feminine. And we had Mars and Jupiter together, which this amplifies, let's say, the will, the drive, the passion, the need, right? And 
generally speaking, when we've got Venus, which is a benefic, and Jupiter benefic, they're in square. It could be just going over the top sometimes, um, a little bit too much optimism, but squares are about taking action. And as Venus and Mars and Jupiter are squaring, so is uh, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, right? This is um, a battle of the retraction or the expansion jupiter is the the expansion and saturn is the retraction do i take a step back or do i have the courage the will the drive the force sometimes even force which is mars to stay on track stay on this dream stay on this vision let's say where love is concerned so we're taking the Good tarot today, and we're also going to use, for clarity, we'll be using the Steampunk Tarot. The Steampunk Tarot by Barbara Moore, which we don't use very often. We will take this deck as clarifiers. Of course, we'll be taking the love messages, the handwritten love messages at the end of the reading. Um, and yes, please, you may uh, comment beneath for your own personal love message. We'll be using the Lenormand um, by Ciro March Marchetti. This is the extended version. We'll take a couple of cards also from the Island Time Wellness, which is more the more negative perspective um, to the relationship. Remember, this is a general reading and will not resonate for all of us. And we're also going to take some emotions, some cards relative to how one is feeling at this time, whether it's you or whether it's your person. Also, the Romance Angels and the Mystic Moon Oracles by Mystic Moon. We're doing a nine-card nine spread today. Let's see what the Karma Dharma speaks to. And just looking at the date, 21st of August, we've been saying from the roughly mid-August and even from the 10th, I'm going to say 10th, 12th, until now the 24th roughly of August are uh, challenging aspects, more so than what positive and easy flowing aspects. So that's why it's an uphill battle recently. I've... I always connect with my, you know, clients, with my patrons. Some clients have more friends now. They've become friends. They're pen pals. We do talk through email. And uh, I'm seeing that there are some returns, some returns that I would never expect because, the, because of the situation that is just really, really... Mm, more on the negative side, so with less opportunities. Um, but miracles do happen. So concentrate, please, on the person you're thinking of and why you're here for this reading. Concentrate on your person. And let's see what the Karma Dharma speaks to at this time around the last degrees the sun is at the 29th degree of leo happy birthday my dear leos and i'm going to say a happy birthday to virgo individuals we've got a few virgos here a few leos as well i know there are a few uh leo virgo cuspers so it's a very important time for many of you at this time let's see what the general energy is because that's what we're reading we're reading the energies Remember, it's a general reading, please, dear friends. And Mercury is still retrograde, still bringing back situations, people, and returns from the past. Mercury is retrograde in Leo. Let's see what's going on. We've got the Empress, beautiful Venus. This is a Venus that rules Taurus and rules Libra. And we see a birthing going on. And Leo is all about birth. Uh, birth, creating something. Leo, Leo is about confidence. Leo is about love, flirtation, fun. 
Leadership. The Empress shows a newborn. The Empress does speak to charisma and manifestation and creativity and receiving the harvest. We are coming into Virgo season as the sun is going to ingress into Virgo in a day or so. So a Virgo is all about the harvest and servicing, doing the hard work, working extra hard, staying on course but being practical. Virgo is about purification, purification and that motherly love. If you look at Virgo, the glyph of Virgo, it does show the wheat, the harvest, which it is, we're coming up to harvest season. Could be literal, could be metaphorical, literal where love is concerned. What fell out? We've got the Hierophant, so Taurus speaks very loud. Taurus Leo with a strength card and the Five of Swords. So two fixed signs being fixated on something we know Leo and Taurus square each other, right? The Leo season, the Leo sun squares off to Taurus, which a square is very Mars, energetically speaking, and Mars is the malefic. It's all about severing. Mars is also... Um, Mars is also... amplified right now as he's in touch with Jupiter through Gemini. Gemini is a ruled, a sign ruled by Mercury that's still retrograde. But we could say also that Mercury and Uranus, they're in square too. So it's, it really is getting out of one's comfort zone and doing something very unexpectedly. We're going to have sudden turns of events because Uranus has been in play with Venus, with Mercury, and they're the personal planets, so this is a very personal issue right now that's going on relative to love. And because Virgo is an Earth sign, just like Taurus, it's about practical matters, it's about reality, but it's also about our perception. Sometimes our perception can stock uh, can stop our perception can stop uh, the forward momentum the way we process the way we communicate dear spirit what is going on in love what is going on with love at this time please enlighten us and advise us we've got also um, I did say Taurus Libra Aries comes through with the Empress as well and um, I don't know, I get strong Leo energies because of the, the child here, uh, the baby, which is, uh, it's birthing something, it's something new, and the, the child brings happiness, right? It could be a promise. It could be a promise of a new beginning. Let's see, someone's been waiting, the Empress. The Empress does speak to being pregnant, being pregnant with an idea, uh, being um, frustrated because of needing to have to wait forever for this birthing, for this production. This production, this child is the relationship. We are looking into love. And of course, it can relate to pregnancy. For those of you that are in the age of being able to give birth to a child. So if you're not planning um, to get pregnant, then do take precaution because there's a lot of fertile ground now for a new beginning. What's the focus point in the nine card spread? Nine of air, nine of swords. There is a lot of worry, a lot of sleepless nights, insomnia. Going to sleep at 11, waking up at 12 and not sleeping until 3 a.m. in the morning. I don't know if some of you had that, if you have felt that, but... Um, I've certainly felt that greatly recently in the past month. 
um, also around this full moon in Aquarius, which Aquarius, remember, is ruled by Uranus, and Uranus is the nervous system. It can speak to stress and anxiety, but this is someone not being able to sleep, being up at night, too many thoughts in their head. We are talking air, areas, perception, communication, maybe not enough, maybe no communication. But remember, nines speak to an ending, an ending of a cycle. Six of air, six of swords. We see the ship, the ship on the horizon here, whether it's, um, looks like the ship is in the air like floating in the air so the abundance for me the ship does speak to abundance and jupiterian energy um, this ship is airborne so i don't know if you're dealing with someone that's physically at a distance uh, but you know air is way faster it is fast i wanted to say air is fast so Air, of course, speaks to technology and thoughts and um, communication. Um, we know that the ship takes forever. It's a slow uh, means of transport, but through the air, it brings, it's like the abundance is coming in faster than ma maybe what you expect. Or even something that was very slow is starting to pick up pace now, starting to change gears, let's say. Six of air, of course, can speak to dealing with a foreigner. Six of swords does mean letting go of the conflict, those five of swords transitioning towards more serenity. And the ship also is a Jupiterian energy, which can speak to a farewell, a journey, an adventure that opens up. Remember Mars, which does speak to, and in, in, in Gemini, does speak to movement. Uh, transportation um, and Jupiter looks like a ship right and so does Saturn if you look at the glyph of Saturn uh, and Jupiter they're like Saturn is the opposite if you turn Jupiter upside down he looks like Saturn so there's a there's a similarity between the two right we said Jupiter is expansion um, and Jupiter is fast uh, Saturn is slow it's taking things slowly so Jupiter is also the wisdom the um, idealism the beliefs and Jupiter is transiting through Gemini so it's it, it to me it's like I'm getting the notion of something that was very far and out of reach is now close to home Gemini is our environment and Jupiter is that ship that was quite far away as a as an idea as a perception and now it's closer to home because remember that even Saturn Saturn is in the in the sign ruled by Jupiter because Jupiter does rule Pisces And there's a bit of a tug of war now. So Jupiter in square with Saturn, which is like expansion or retraction. Um, they both speak to wisdom and understanding in the areas that they're placed now. Jupiter is the teacher within, um, you know, the teacher and the student together within Gemini. And we could say also, uh, of course, that because Jupiter is ruled by Mercury now, because Mercury rules Gemini, they're in good aspect. Jupiter and Mercury, they're in good aspect. So this is about information, understanding, having gone through a learning curve, maybe, for some of us. Four of water. Four of cups. Six of fire. Six of Wands, Three of Water. Page of Air, Page of Swords, 
justice in a very, very important, very important position here that's got to do with the past and moving towards the future. Justice. Libra. Major Arcana. And we've got a page of water here, which is the page of cups, and we've got the page of earth. So we've got a page of pentacles and a page of cups, and we've got temperance. Let me just close the door for a moment. So we've got two cards that speak to patience. Temperance is Sagittarius and Jupiter. This is Archangel Michael saying that uh, all is happening in divine timing. Remember that uh, Sag uh, temperance comes after the uh, Scorpio card, the death card. What's beneath that? We've got the King of Earth, uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Minor Arcana of the Emperor. And we've got the Empress there. Interesting, King of Earth, slow, gradual, dependable, someone who's very responsible usually. This is someone that needs their time. This could be a foreigner. Okay, and we've got a King here. And we've got three pages. Three pages mean a lot of fresh energies. Page of Swords, Page of Water, and Page of Earth. So it's all about, first of all, it's the perception, then we've got the emotion, then we've got the practicality. So nine card spread, which we've got the past, present, future, past, present, future. That's why this position, the justice card, is connected to the past and towards leading towards the future. This is the outgoing card. The page of earth so we start off with a six of air six of air is about change it's a new journey opening up but we've come from the five of swords which five of swords are sh usually involving third parties it doesn't have to be a secret love affair it could be involving other people that are not um they're not wanting the same thing they're not on the same page relative to this relationship for whatever reason, okay? Um, Five of Swords usually shows someone that is willing to go to war and uh, be injured, get cut, go through that reckoning. Um, so winning over all costs is the Five of Swords, but remember Swords cut both ways. So it means that both parties, both parties, whoever is in this, you know, conflict of the Five of Swords, which is a very challenging card, it cuts both parties, whether it's two people, whether it's three people, it could be a group of five people, who cares? But we see here that where this relationship is concerned, in the past, we see a possibility of leaving quarrels, leaving challenges and saying, okay, I want to move towards serenity. Um, I want to find peace. I don't want to fight. I don't want to be in this challenging situation. This is what shows up in the past position. So someone decided to either distance themselves from this relationship and move forward because they did not want to take any part in this challenge we've also got the three of water here which can speak to a love triangle three of cups is a love triangle many times of course it could speak to a reconciliation an on off situation right um but it can also speak to other people being involved. And that's because, look, we've got the Four of Water here. Four of Cups can speak to emotional missed opportunities, obviously. But to me, it's more about someone's personal um, and emotional life in their personal life, in their private life. 
Four of Cups says, I'm unhappy. I'm focusing on those cups that are spilt and not on the cup that's being offered to me from spirit. I've got other emotional issues to tend to and I'm not looking at that fourth cup, which four of cups to me, in some decks they are in four cups in the upright, which say that there is a possibility that someone may have thought, let's say, that they would be emotionally happy where they're, you know, what they're letting go of, they're looking for that emotional happiness. But there is a, a possibility that they did not find it. Why? Because they were focusing on those three of cups, which we've got here. The three of cups is celebratory. Three of cups is, I've got everything I need, right? Um, the three of cups comes after the two of cups, which is the union. Three of cups is too many people or an involvement of a third party or even a fourth but it can also speak to coming back together and drinking to you know a new beginning because two of cups plus one that that third cup is like a uh, it's like a feeling of okay self-love i'm loving myself and what i desire what i emotionally hope for is to come back together and reconcile possibly our differences, which is the Two of Cups, right? The Ace of Cups, is an, it's an option that comes from spirit. It's a possibility that's offered. It's a chance that's offered from spirit. Do we accept it, though? We can also say two's company, three's a crowd. But three is also the possibility of expansion, taking the next step moving forward within a relationship the empress is also a three let's not forget and that's the initial point of success so if there's been a breakup and a makeup this doesn't happen for no reason when someone returns to a certain relationship it's that they found something there there was something very important and that's why they look back and they overcome either the issues, either the hurts, whatever. And they return because there was something special that they found. And we go from the four to the three. That's interesting, isn't it? Because it's like going backwards. Here, as I said, someone decided to move on, to find tranquility. They don't, didn't want to be in a third party situation. So they bailed, they let go. And they went back to where they thought that they could find happiness. Four of water, though. Did they find their emotional happiness? Because the nine of swords is very close. Right? So is, we've got air, air, and air. Lots of air, a lot to do with perception. A lot to do with the mind. The mind and these days, relationships are very, very inclined towards more the, um, the cerebral connection. Um, and they do say when you win over someone's mind, when, when they have you on their mind all the time, um, that's where everything begins off with an idea, with a thought. And then that connects to the heart, the heart chakra. So there's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of conflict relative to a cerebral connection. And maybe the conflict is the emotional side. I do see here with the six of wands, which is the Leo card more likely. We do have Sagittarius, we do have Leo. Yes, we could say Aries as well. Let's not get stuck on the signs. But six of fire can speak to success, ego, Six of Wands is recognition. It's like someone who feels special because it's like they've been put on a pedestal and they're being congratulated for their accomplishments. So it's like a, someone is putting a bet with themselves that they can win over a situation, that they could succeed. Succeed, it's like putting a bet on myself that I can become the victor here. 
but on another level so I do get a bit of ego here on another level the six of wands um, is about finding balance remember sixes six is the lovers the lovers is also choices though it's it's um, yes it could be a twin flame connection the the lovers but sixes are all all about balance all about harmony and reciprocity so it's here it's as though someone put a bet on their own self that they could either succeed in a situation that they were in because a third situation where they actually desired or to to succeed in a relationship they had to go to war as i said but they chose not to they chose serenity balance trying to find the balance nevertheless but the six of fire fire is desire leo energy is all about i want to win or this is this is what's true to me and in my heart that i really want to succeed i want to be recognized i want to be valued um and there could be some uh, competitive energies relative to a past connection maybe that someone was in i'm going to say uh, because sometimes even um, someone's reputation in the world someone's uh, yes reputation how they're seen by others is more important than you know than the success of their emotional home life so there is a possibility here that someone put in more effort where career was concerned let's say their vocation so on and four of water is like um not putting any effort in at home so six of fire is also yes I know I'm very successful where have I succeeded that there's a very strong magnetic attraction yes I know and I recognize that there's a very strong sexual attraction to to the person to the person that I desire to connect with but emotionally because fours do speak to the home the past it's, it's very it's a very personal the fourth fourth house right my personal life my my heart my what I hold de near and dear to my heart emotionally I have not found that in my personal life but I'm pretending that okay I'm trying to make up for it through career I'm succeeding in career but in my personal life it's a done deal I just haven't found the happiness so possibly cycles having gone through cycles here because remember the four of water is uh, it's got to do with the past fours always speak to the past it's the natural fourth house of cancer and of course cancer is the crab where they put on a brave front but on the inside they're very soft and mushy so someone acting or needing or trying to hold up hold up and uh, look like they're strong successful so on and so forth but where their home and their personal emotional life is concerned there's nothing there's no happiness there there are missed opportunities for happiness now even if there have been efforts to move towards serenity and that could also mean there could be physical distance between the two of you which could make it even harder because the four of water again is emotionally you may not know what's going on with me in my home because you're not living in my in my um, environment so I'm keeping secret remember the crab cancer um, it keeps a very secret personal private life but puts on a brave front Leo as to okay I'm successful I'm a successful person in my in my community I'm well known um, 
I've got the recognition, but where my personal life is concerned, there's a lot of lack of happiness there. And, um, and even trying to come into serenity and succeed where you're, the relationship you're hoping to manifest now, because I'm talking about if we're talking about third party and someone trying to make things work in the past, right, with a past connection, mm, and there may have been a lot of ego, a lack of emotional happiness, and that's because there was still, let's say, a third party in the energetically speaking, even if it was physically. For some of you, it could have been just someone's energy, their memory, it, especially if it's a long term, uh, sorry, uh, if it's a long distance relationship. It's like the uh, skeleton in the closet. Even if there's been a breakup and someone's trying to make it work in their personal life. I feel that there was uh, a lack of compatibility, a lack of this is what I want to accomplish and this is what you want to accomplish. It's like not being on the same page. I don't get, uh, I don't get balance. The effort has been put in, I would say, but there's a lack of balance. whether it's in the personal, the individual and in their life or relative to a past connection, even the connection you're trying to manifest. Okay, these are the similar messages, whether it's for the individual or someone dealing with a past connection um, and trying to manifest another connection. So we go from the six of fire where there's been recognition. Yes, I realize this is a very strong sexual connection. Um, sometimes you may have felt very successful as well. That yes, this person desires me. There must be love. There must be um, an emotional bond as well. But we go from the four to the three, which still involves third parties. And if we look at the... Uh, the uh, four and the three, that's seven cups, which could speak to a lot of confusion. Seven of cups is not seen clearly. Trying to communicate, communication is very off because nine of swords, right? Nine of swords is like, I'm wondering what's going on. All these swords in the head, in the mind, piercing the brain, going around in circles again and again, trying to make things logical, trying to be logical, looking at things from many perspectives. And we've got a page of air which adds up to 10 swords, really. So the three of water here, of course, in the past position, but also coming into the present, can speak to happiness, can speak to having come together and having a moment of happiness, some good news, possibly also a reconciliation. But then comes the Nine of Swords, which Nine of Swords, remember, is the end of the, um, the cycle the end of the cycle, the end of the cycle of worrying, being that worry wart. And I don't know, I mean, for me, Virgo comes through very strongly. It could be the Virgo sees that we're coming into. Remember, Virgo is all about the little details, and this would be a Virgo energy very strongly. Nevertheless, Mercurial, it's about thinking too much, you know, trying to uh, think of something that's crazy, trying to make it, you know, give a logical explanation. Um, but we've got the Page of Air here, so the Page of Swords, which is the Messenger. Um, which, of course, the you know Page of Swords could also speak to someone that's checking out someone's social media. 
Now, pages can also speak to children. We did see the child here. So this could be a third party being an actual child, yes. But the Page of Swords is also the messenger, a message of clearing things out. Remember, Page of Swords being mercurial and Mercury's retrograde in Leo, in the house of the child, in the house of, I want to take a risk, I want to have fun, I want to create, um, I want to have, you know, want to flirt, I want to communicate. Mercury in Leo can be very loud, which means very much about coming through with the goods. And what do I mean by that? Being open where the heart is concerned. So there may be some messages, some communications that you've been waiting for, which is going to bring serenity. You've been waiting for this, which is going to bring a sense of justice. We've also got justice here. Libra. Libra, which is with the south node of the moon, right? And Venus is um, surely in, in the next couple of weeks coming up to that south node in Libra, which is all about discomfort, dealings with the past, needing to let go of that south node in Libra. Libra is about peace, um, peace talks, finding harmony but remember the south node is what we need to let go of because it's more than likely what's run its course what's meant to be left in the past because obviously there's been an imbalance an injustice and libra does speak to court court matters divorce proceedings Finding that middle ground, letting bygones be bygones. We don't, we cannot relate, we're not equal. There's been injustices, let's call it a day. Let's move on towards that north node in Aries. Which is getting out of our comfort zone. So there could be talks, there could be understanding, yes. Messages, talks about potential separation, divorce of a previous relationship that is possible court court hearings relative to um child support who's going to who's going to uh, keep the child who's going to you know the um nevertheless who is the most fittest parent to be able to raise this child now if this is not communication relative to an actual child then there will be talks about a new beginning okay where someone um receives their justice because the the justice card here remember the justice card is number 11 it's like a portal that opens up so we've got a page of water here which is something unexpected it could be an unexpected offer something that you did not expect um, to communicate about because it is Piscean energy and Pisces is very sudden, very um, unexpected, right? Just like the the fish um, could be very slimy, can slip away, you know, just like running water. Pisces, unconditional love, it's compassion, it's sacrifice, but it's also, it can be something that's very unexpected, something that was, you were elusive to, you could not imagine, let's say, because it could be something very imaginative, something that you would never suspect, an offer that you would never suspect. And I'm wondering if that's not an offer of mothering someone else's child. This could be for one of you out there. An offer of being the potential mother or caretaker of someone's child so nanny i know someone someone out there and you know who you are my beautiful nanny this could be a very me a special message for you if you're listening so someone being the caretaker of someone's child why because 
of a lack of uh, a lack of um, the ability to raise a child it will be different for each okay because we do have a king of pentacles here king of earth which is usually a father what's he sitting on he's sitting on the four of air the four of swords which is in action but there's some sort of a heartbreak that this king of pentacles this father this boss um has gone through something that they've been waiting on they've been needing to heal what's beneath and we've got the king of swords king of swords aquarius gemini libra could be an advisor could be interesting we've got two kings and we've got an empress here what's the king of swords sitting on we've got the ten of fire which is Ten of fire, which is a really, really heavy burden. So there may be jealousy here as well, but, you know, ten of wands turns into the ace. It's a cycle that's ending, obviously. And there's the empress. Oh, my God. The empress comes through again. So we see the divine feminine very much in her own. She knows her power. She's, she's, she knows that she's got the ability to nurture love through compassion, through her patience through her mothering skills in however that speaks to for you that the harvest she's ready to take the harvest or maybe she's the prize relative to these two kings who could be at in competition on another level if this isn't a choice the king of air would be could be someone that was very cold and detached and not speaking their truth relative to issues pertaining to a mother or to um, uh, or to uh, someone who they share children with. Many times with the Empress, I do see her also as being a grandmother for some, for some people out there. And yes, this could be, um, this could be, uh, a gift, a gift of a birth from a son or a daughter for some of you. Um, and of course, it doesn't mean that grandmothers do not have their own children if she's young, right? If she's able to bear her own children. Um, she could have older children and be a grandmother already and then she becomes a mother. That does happen as well. But here, Four of Swords is in action four of swords again fours to do with the past four is also the emperor four of swords in action a lot of heartbreak relative to someone's personal home life Now, if there was, if this is the same person, someone was very detached, not speaking truthfully, not being open about their open wounds, their, the, whatever they're going through in their home situation, maybe also talking about being advised from someone, a legal representative, right? And needing their time. Because this is like revisiting, going back to the past. We see the Four of Swords, this is in the past position. But remember, the Four of Swords comes before the Six. It's like going back to square one, having a second chance. Maybe there were wrong, there were wrong decisions made in the past. And this either King of Swords or King of Pentacles, right? Going back to square one, having an opportunity to go back to the past and retweak and change direction in this time change attitude change ideas this could speak to second chances as well second chances at doing things right this way at uh, this time because here we've got as i said we've got temperance and she's asking for patience king of earth is asking for patience remember 
Temperance comes after the death card, which says there's some sort of an ending going on relative to this king of pentacles. And we um, we finish up with a page of, of earth, the page of pentacles. So this is like a promise of studying something for the future. Pages, remember, are messengers. We've got lots of messages, lots of communication here. Okay, so um, let's move the cards up a little bit. I know you can't see the writing. Well, not enough space on my table. Okay, let's take some other cards and get a little bit more clarity on what's going on. What is going on? Let's take the Romance Angels. If we look at this, um, the spread like this, six of swords, nine of swords, and then the page of earth. So this is more about perception. We see more about balance, let's say serenity, but then come the challenges of the nine of swords, but then we end up with a page of earth. So something leaves from just the thought, the communication, the perception, and becomes more practical, more real. The six of wands here, says I'm going to succeed I'm going to initiate I'm going to um, cut through clear the air go through reckoning communicate try to understand try and find out what's going on and then the page of earth which again promises something more stable long-term and real Let's see what's going on. Okay, lovely. We've got heart to heart conversation. Heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. So honesty is a must. It is safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. The fact that it speaks to safety means that someone was putting their heart on the line or fearing putting their heart on the line. Maybe this will be the understanding that there is true emotion, a true emotional bond and it is safe to be open where the heart is concerned. Flirt. Extend your light-hearted energy to others. This is like saying, spirit is like saying, it's time to uh, take a chance. Flirt. Add some fire. Add some happiness. Take a risk. Leo energy comes through very strongly. Let's see what else. What I get here is that someone is very, uh, very much minding their heart here, very protective of their heart. And I would say it's more so the masculine, whoever takes the masculine side in the relationship. What That's why they come through as more flirtatious, more you know, light-hearted, and they usually um, come through as more sexual than what emotional, which is like uh, how they protect their heart and how they sort of hold back on their most biggest sensitivities, which is that openness of heart. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. So someone's willing to take a risk to express that's the advice, nevertheless. What else is coming through? There can be an expression of love here. But it's it's something about uh, adding more play here, not being so serious. I get that someone fears being really serious where talk is concerned. Maybe things need to be a little bit more lighthearted, more playful. After all, we do have three pages here, which do speak to play, yeah? And that could lead to something much more, 
much more open, much more mm, truthful. Make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. We do see children here. Um, playful energy is flirtatious. does remind me of the soulmate connection. But there are children involved for some of you. Some of you have obviously known this person from a past lifetime. Others of you from childhood. One more, please, Spirit. I think this is it. Let your friends help you. Ask for and accept support from others. And your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. So your beliefs have got a lot to do with decisions made at this time. So the religious factors does remind me of people that come from different parts of the world. Let's take the, um, the Lenormand. If you're wondering where Agape and uh, Gaia are, they're here. Agape is under the table and Gaia is by the window. They're in my presence. It's my voice. I think it helps them relax more. <laughs> it's their sleep time anyway. Let's see what's going on, dear spirit. What's going on in love at this point with these important relationships, this twin flame, soulmate, karmic love story? What's going on? Remember, there are many stories here, many, and we're not all on the same timeline. So to make the effort, someone needs help from their friends, obviously, here. Friendship comes through as very important as well. For some of you, this could be a friend, someone that is a love partner, a love interest, but also a friend. So maybe there's uh, support necessary here. We've got the book, and the book does speak to lessons, but it also does remind me of that closed book, someone that doesn't communicate easily. There's a lot of learning going on. Pisces comes through. We've got the owls and we've got the birds, a lot of birds. There will be wisdom about things that were hidden. There can be some stress, but there can also be some excitement here with the birds. Finding out something from your friends through social media. Uh, there could be gossip, there could be fear of gossip. Talk of third parties, someone's reputation, someone's very scared of um, their secret life not coming to light. There could be communication during the night time. We've got an offer on the table with the, the flowers, the tulips here. The tulips here with the, um, the owls. So... This could be a surprise invitation as well. We've got the messengers here. Birds also speak to flight. So a surprise invitation for travel to visit someone. Way too many. A get together, uh, let's meet up. It could be a meeting during the night time. A secretive meeting as well. More birds. We've got the clouds clearing and the doubts clearing. Um, the sun breaks through the clouds and the messengers come in, come in, and bring happy news. I would say with the because they're coming from the sun. We could see the sun. Interesting. We've got the queen. Queen of Swords or Queen of Wands with the Queen, the King of Wands or the King of Swords, I'm going to say. So maybe changing also roles where hot and cold I get, hot and cold. Let's see. And we've got the... Um, 
the compass here, but someone's following their true north, following their heart. And of course, this could speak to travel, obviously. And this is getting out of our comfort zone. Someone's getting out of their comfort zone. Let's take a couple more. We've got the bear, which speaks to a leader, responsibility, someone who holds a position of power. Yes, this could be a boss. Yes, this is someone who needs to have the courage. It's Mars in Aries. And um, someone who needs to be strong, who is a strong character, maybe needs to be stronger than what they usually are. But this speaks to power and leadership to cross over a bridge. And the bridge could be choices. It's a 38, which equals 11, just like the Justice card. Maybe to get over past hurts. Because it reminds me of the Five of Cups, to let go of the mourning of the past and look towards the future. This could be literally someone traveling over a bridge. But there's a risk factor. There's a risk factor and someone needs to, needs to be strong, needs to be powerful. And the bear also is protection. I protect my cub, just like the Empress. She's holding her child, her newborn. So the bear could be a mother, it could be a father, it could be someone that protects their cubs nevertheless, or is in a position of power with, which holds a lot of responsibility. Um, and whatever they do could also put at risk, put other people at risk. So whatever this means, it's like a great risk factor, but I feel here, with the true north is I'm going to do this because reaching for the north node is never easy. It's discomfort. Let's take just one more on this bridge. But we've got the messenger coming in. The new cycle, the ace. This is someone's ready to take that travel. They're following their wish fulfillment. It is the nine of cups. The messenger comes in, the rider. It's an ace. Very passionate, very speedy very much activity about travel, about a new cycle. So there will be an opportunity, just like it's Mercury in Gemini. It's like the magician energy. So expect news, expect travel, expect movement. And remember, she's on, she's on a merry-go-round. And it's like the bear, whoever is in charge here, is ready to get off that merry-go-round and start a brand new cycle because there will be oppor an opportunity the horse which is action is riding on the rainbow so there's a you know the rainbow comes after the rain the storm there's an opportunity here and we've got the child oh my god we've got the child number 13 again 13 remember is scorpio scorpio is change it's an ending and then a new cycle Right. There's the key. The key could also be an open wound, which could be an actual child or the beginning. But someone's looking for an escape, a way out of this cage, whatever this situation is. It's an open wound that someone's been carrying from their childhood. But there is an opportunity for healing now. The sun is in good aspect from Leo, which is the risk factor, the confidence the leadership trining over to Chiron, which is the key in Aries. And that's where the North Node is. This is what I'm willing to do. It took time. It takes time. This is Kronos. This is Karma. This is responsibility. After a lot of worry, injustices, financial loss, um, someone feeling that something was eating away at them, something was hurting them, something was uh, stressing them out. There was depression, there was worry, there was uh, financial loss, there was uh, so much going on in the past. And there's the divine masculine, the boy next door. Could be Earth, it looks like the King of Pentacles to me. King of Pentacles, King of, uh, King of uh, Cups, usually it's water or Earth this divine masculine, um, but could also be um, um, 
he does come through as a knight as well in the past so maybe someone that was not in their king um energy which we saw the king of pentacles uh that divine masculine would remind me more so of the uh knight of the knight of uh, pentacles right someone that's very slow strategic needs their time let's see let's see what's going on emotionally in uh now towards the end of august or whenever whenever you get to view this message let's see i want to see where you are emotionally i will take three cards for you and three cards for your person three cards for you who's watching this video who's watching this reading where are you in a lot of contemplation trying to see things from a bird's eye view but there's a lot of uh, cloudedness there's release there's something that you're needing to release and if you haven't been able to release it um, it's like you're gonna have a tower moment and whatever needs to go is going if you were not able to release it whether it was um, hurts pains from the past a particular person from the past you've got a tower moment an awakening the mirroring card the mirroring card trying to figure out what that means here maybe when you're having your revelation your person the person on your mind is also having a revelation about your connection that's the mirroring card to me many times speaks of the you know uh, both parties that they're living on the um, like on the same wavelength um, and sort of in reflection to each other so what's going on in one person's life is going on in the other person's life at the same time with some sim with some differences of course not exactly the same so what's going on for your person they've gone through cycles a lot of karmic cycles but this time it's like an ending to a cycle there's a gift here for them at this point um, something that they're not talking about, something um, that they're not communicating about to you. And it's got to do with their family. A family of origin or a family that they've built. Let's take one more on that. Newt, abandoned. They're not telling you that they're coming out of another relationship. Or that uh, maybe they also are fearing. They've been fearing hurting um if because if they've got if they're carrying childhood abandonment issues this maybe is an open wound that they're dealing with which they did not want they didn't want um to happen towards their own offspring so you get what i mean maybe they're trying to heal the wounds of a child if they've gone through an an ending of another a past relationship a family unit the general energy is full and patience it's like more internal and of course we know retrogrades are about going inwards right let's take some uh, cards here and what is this i want to see what this four of water is We've got the Six of Cups. Missed opportunities relative to a soulmate connection. Seven of Wands. It was just this connection was maybe just uh, against all odds. It was against, uh, it, was, it was filled with many uh, challenges. Uh, that's why maybe there were missed opportunities or someone was not able to accept this relationship because of other obligations either to their family of heritage or um, to the family that they had, let's say. But this may have been an, an internet-based uh, relationship at a physical distance as well, uh, because we've got the star card, which is 
uh, the internet, social media, and the star is also uh, hope for the future that someone's wish could come true. This offer that we see with the Six of Cups here. Why do we have the Nine of Swords? And remember what I said about someone's reputation, being careful of their reputation out there in the world, their name in society, because the star could be someone that's well known in their society. It is right next to the Six of Wands, someone who's very successful in their life. I want to take one card on the Six of Six of Wands. Why do we have the Six of Wands? Is it about ego or succeeding? It's the Page of Pentacles. So someone studying how to succeed, how to um, come into balance and harmony and succeed within this relationship. But also someone that's very careful and looking towards the future, uh, but needing to succeed in a certain situation before they can... Um, get to their goal you know because the page of pentacles is also here it's all about learning and again there could be a child in the picture why do we have the nine of swords we've got the lovers the nine of swords and we've got the devil unbelievable unbelievable there's a great desire to connect here but there is also lots of challenges where making a choice is concerned. Someone fears the worst here. For some of you, I mean, this could also be revelations here that someone's figuring out that there's a third party, that there is that there is a third party here. We've got the book, which is things that are unknown. We've got the owls, someone's doing their homework, nine of swords, someone's checking out someone's social media. There's something that they're hearing off the grapevine here, finding out that there's another relationship here, that there's a fork in the road of their relationship for some of you. I mean, the lovers is choices, right? But someone also fears um, fears um, looking at the relationship as it actually is. Someone fears that they're being used only for um, intimate uh, intimacy and sex. Someone maybe is maybe not wanting to see that this is a true relationship, that this is a twin flame relationship, and they're using the excuse that, okay, it's only... I desire to be with this person. It's only sexual. It's nothing. I can get over this easily. And I feel that that's the divine masculine, possibly as well, because there's a lot of Saturn. There's a lot of Saturn with them. So they're going through heavy lessons. They're dealing with a lot um, right now. I do feel it's more the divine masculine. Let's take one more on the devil, because the devil does speak to fears, but this is a very strong attraction you know this is like i want to move forward but i can't or i really desire doing this even though i'm fearing this is a big risk but i'm going to take the chance i'm willing to take the chance and there's the four of wands which is the marriage card it is um uh, it is a uh, it speaks to a building it speaks to a home it speaks to a marriage um, it speaks to something long term. This is what I desire to manifest. But it's totally out of the question right now because there are cycles that need to be closed up, cycles that need to finish up, which, and that means someone letting go of the south node and moving towards the north node. What is this messenger about? We've got a Knight of Cups. There's a message. There's an offer on the table. The Knight of Cups comes through. Let's take one more. So Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. We've got the Two of Cups. Yep. And there's three cups there, obviously. So the Knight of Cups we know is someone that is not certain. But 
Or maybe they're just protecting their heart. Remember the card, it is safe for you to love. Someone fears opening up their heart. But I feel that the uh, Page of Air is very intelligent. Page of Air can understand that this is, this offer comes from someone that is on the same page. Two of Cups is here. This is a romantic gesture, obviously. But also there is the chance that there's still third parties here because of the three cups. Or for some of you, this is going to be a reconciliation. What is the justice card about? We've got the Ace of Wands. This is the light coming on. An opportune moment here. Ace of Cups, unbelievable. Unbelievable, everyone. There's desire and there's emotion here. What is the page of water? We've got the three of wands. This could be um, an offer to travel. This could be an offer to wait. Uh, wait for me, we'll be catching up, I'll be coming in, right? We see the ships, the ships on the horizon with the three, three of wands. Obviously, three of wands comes after the two. So a choice has been made. Remember how I said in the beginning that the ship was going over water and it takes forever, but here it's going through the air, so it may come in much faster. And we've got the Ten of Pentacles here. Ten of Pentacles is security. It's, it promises long term. But Ten of Pentacles is also a family unit. It's a marriage. And we see, you know, we see the couple and we see the little child here. And this is, uh, it's showing a tarot reader. So someone's looking for information. Someone's looking for guidance here. The Ten of Pentacles turns into the Ace of Pentacles. Because those, these ships that are, that are coming in, that took forever... They took forever because of someone being in another commitment or they took forever because um, pentacles remember to are slow and um, to get to the ten of pentacles takes forever and the ten of pentacles is a promise of a long-term marriage but if there were blockages of third parties and past connections obviously this could not happen we do see one child here in the uh, ten of pentacles and let's take the page of earth we've got the four of pentacles four of pentacles waiting on i mean four of pentacles we know is the miser card this is like someone paying their dues or someone mm, like securing something because fours always speak to a more stable home life right which is connected to the past. We've got the Eight of Wands. This is like someone's paying, paying for someone's flight. Someone's having financial hardship and therefore there's financial help here for someone to fly somewhere, to travel somewhere. Someone's studying this, whether they're going to accept it. And we've got the Eight of Pentacles. Someone's willing to put in the work. Two eights. Eights are the infinity symbol, remember? It's like revisiting. Mm, maybe this has happened for you in the past and it's a repeating of a cycle. Maybe with different outcomes this time. And there's the Ace of Pentacles, my friends, which I was just talking about here, that there's a cycle closing. The Ace of Pentacles, three aces, offers many opportunities here. So we had... Page of Swords, we had the Page of Cups, and we had the Page of Earth, Pentacles. So we went from perception to emotion, understanding of the energies, of the emotions, and the flowing of the energies towards a Page of Coins, which is more about um, crystallizing. Pages are fresh energies, they're new beginnings, they're messengers, and they're all about preparing for the future. And here we've got three aces, which do speak to new beginnings and opportune moments. 
two of pentacles, things being up in the air or someone uh, doing a juggling act or trying to keep things, you know, from keep both pentacles up in the air, ju the juggler, you know, I can't be doing this forever. It's someone that is, and there's the infinity symbol again and the justice card, you see. There's the infinity symbol again. We did have Lionsgate not long ago, which is like a portal that's opening, right? And we've got the Justice card right here. And the chariot is beneath that. The chariot and justice. So movement towards justice and the Six of Wands. Look, I'm succeeding. Remember the Six of Wands there. Look, I am being recognized. I'm being valued. I am... Uh, succeeding in whatever this chariot is because the chariot means change moving towards justice these are very strong cards the chariot and then justice right and the two two of pentacles which says that someone's doing a dance and there's the um there's the leo strength card again the infinity symbol so someone's been in between two worlds for some of you you're going back and forth between two different people we did have a king of pentacles we did have a king of swords um lots of pentacles here lots of earth which speaks to being grounded things are moving towards something much more stable and long term we've got the lovers and we've got the two of cups here We've got Uranus, we've got Saturn. What we didn't have was the Wheel of Fortune, which is interesting. But we've got Temperance, which is saying patience. Let's take um, the Island Time Wellness, because we see many opportunities here for someone to put in the work. Um... Something that many of you may have been waiting on now is like we go from the Four of Pentacles to the Eight. The Four is the Miser and the Eight is, yes, I'm willing to put in the work, the Virgo season, right? So I'm going to say from Taurus to Virgo. Remember, Virgo season is trining over to Taurus. Taurus is about being valued, is about being resourceful, is about those five senses is about those big changes as Uranus is there. Those big changes that may happen suddenly and out of the blue. It can be stressful though. Sudden changes, unexpected, big shifts, big aha moments. What is possibly going on? For the majority, energetically speaking, we've got heartbroken, deeply hurt, sad, separation, breakup, feeling lost, grieving and mourning. Camera, reminiscing, keepsake, perception, learn from the past and make memories. And we've got love, unconditional love, self-love, oneness, passion, affection and attraction. Let's get more information. Engagement ring. Engagement, partnership, commitment, eternity, completion, and you, and union. This is the past. Maybe there was promise of that. Maybe there was a breakup of an engagement, of a marriage, um, and separation. Maybe there was promise, for those of you that are not coming out of a past relationship, there was a promise of something long-term and a long-term partnership, a union, but there were disappointments with a heartbreak. The heart with a key, welcoming love, meeting the one. Open your heart, getting together, perfect. The key, remember, is the unlocking. We saw the key and we saw that Chiron is in good aspect with the sun. So we're finding the key to, and that could be through revisiting the past because the camera speaks to reminiscing, which is going back, learning from the past and making memories. Going back to the past, nostalgia of the past.
And we've got unconditional love, self-love, oneness, passion, affection and attraction. So for some of you, yes, this could be possibly someone coming in that may remind you of a past relationship. Those of you that are looking for new love, but this is after self-love. You need to be ready when you meet the one. All right? What's beneath that? Hand of cards. Take a chance. Risk being strategic. Options. Not showing hand and gambling. Yes, this is someone that is going to take a risk on love. Remember the bridges here. Someone is willing to take a risk and reach that north node. Hand of cards reminds me of Leo. It's Leo is lucky games. Could be someone that goes to the casino. Someone that there is a huge risk factor. But we see how she's carrying the heart. It's a big heart. That's a big heart. Could speak to a heavy heart as well. So it wasn't easy for this heart to be offered, let's say. It's taking a big risk. Girl talk, time with friends, moving on, happily single, living in the moment, having fun. This offer, this risk could be given to you once you're on the phone, talking with a friend. Those of you, some of you are letting go and you're thinking I'm moving on. That's when, um, that's when this hand of cards will, this risk will be taken and there's a message coming in. There's an offer on the table. Okay. So when you're living in the moment and having fun, that's when the news comes in. All right, so let's take some emotions. Let's take some emotions, your emotions, their emotions. How is your person feeling? But we could also be connecting with your own emotions. Let's see what we have. We've got trusting, six of cups, interesting. This is um, soulmate connection or someone needing to trust. We've got regrets with the Nine of Swords. Lots of worry about not doing things in the right way or not seeing things clearly or not having the ma made the correct choice because on the Nine of Swords in the most important position, which is the middle of the uh, nine card spread, we've got the Nine of Swords twice. There are regrets. We've got a King of Wands, Fire Sign. For some of you, this could be an Air Sign. We've got Surprised, a stable offer that someone's going to be surprised about. We've got Anger and some sort of a breakup. And we've got Frustrated, which is like the Empress energy. Frustrated because of third parties. Infatuated as well. Someone is infatuated. Not sure if it's love. Not sure if it's sexual um, desire. Mm. The infatuation energy comes through with the uh, Page of Cups, which is here. Um, moving towards the future, in the now and towards the future. Maybe someone's uncertain of their feelings. If you have been in a distant relationship and you have not connected physically, this could be an opportunity for that as well. So there may be feelings of infatuation. If there haven't been, um, if this relationship has not crystallized and become real yet. My heart still bleeds for you. I'm not living, just breathing. Lots of worries. Lots of worries this time. Our love affair still haunts me. My life is empty without you. I'll do whatever it takes to get you back. Wow. Lots of endings here. Lots of challenges. We're done. It hurts too much. I can't do this anymore. Babe, I love you so. Another 10. Unbelievable. It's done. Door closed. Feeling blue. They cheated. Remember, if you break up on a Mercury retrograde, it's not certain that this breakup will last. And if you make up on a Mercury retrograde again, it could be the same. Don't ever think that I don't love you and that I forgot you. I will always be here for you with open arms. Are you the one? 
I need time. Time to process, to think. Please be patient with me. I hate you. You're my other half, I feel it. I regret the moment that I let you go. I would say at this point, be careful what you say. Um, think before you act because of the energies that are surrounding us because you may regret. Lots of people will have regrets. We saw the regrets card here. Your eyes are familiar to me. I know that we've shared lives before. You must feel it too. I don't want to be the third person. I've made space for you in my life. You left me in the dark, stuck on you. If you won't or can't accept my life and my ways, then wherever I can have any man or woman with a blink of an eye. That's a lot of ego that we saw up here with the Six of Wands. And I love you. So we've got love-hate, love-hate uh, relationships, energies. This is the first time that we've got both the I hate you and that I love you in the reading. So these are very opposing energies, which is like the energies in the sky. Very crazy right now. You are so hot, I want you, you drive me crazy, which is that devil energy. So for some of you, there could be a lot of frustration if you're very sexually inclined towards this person and uh, there's a physical distance, obviously. So there are feelings of frustration, anger, regrets, but there are also surprises and there's also be careful where trust is concerned. We're needing to trust. Where there's distrust, that's where we have the it's done, we're done, right? Door closed, so on and so forth. All right, my dears. So I think that's it for today. If you're interested in a personal reading, um, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, there are many messages here, many opportunities. But also remember the that we've got Venus here. And uh, Venus is transiting through Virgo. She will, at the beginning of September, she will be in her home sign of Libra. So, But we'll be dealing still with past situations because she'll be connecting with the South Node in Libra. Now, because Venus is going to pass over Juno, the asteroid of commitment and marriage, Juno is still close, is coming up to the south node. So many commitments are going to be annulled, right? There's a release of commitments that were not equal. Commitments, agreements, marriages, contracts, whatever. Um, and Venus. Venus will be dealing with past situations. Um... So where there's been stinginess and pressing the brakes on being um, of service because you know relationships are, they need work, which is Venus in Virgo. If you don't do things, practical things for your partner, um, even taking out the trash, you know, is a way of showing love. And that's what Venus in Virgo is. It's about um, preparing a nice meal, going to the trouble of doing that. Even if they don't say, you don't say, I love you, just preparing that meal with candlelight, so on and so forth, is showing affection, showing, nurturing and loving that good meal is like feeding, feeding the five senses, which is Venus that rules Taurus, right? Um, and, you know, nurturing Venus is all about nurturing and doing the duties, uh, being dutiful as to show my affection through actions that's venus in virgo now remember mercury being retrograde still until 28th of october which is another week um when he turns direct from the 28th um, of uh, august sorry when he turns direct um he still will be passing over his shadow phase so we'll be getting those revelations things will start to show up about what that mercury retrograde was about uh, because I'm going to say Mercury in Leo is about um, this is what I desire, this is what I'm want, wanting to create. Um, this is about being vocal about what's in your heart. Um, yeah, and about taking action, having the confidence. And Mercury retrograding in Virgo is the acts of service, being dutiful and not needing to 
be up on stage to scream out, yeah, you are the one that I want. <laughs> so it reminds me of, you know, the, the movie, you're the one that I want. That would be like Mercury in Leo. But then Mercury in, in uh, Virgo would be more, um, and talking about the movie Grease, right, where, um, you know, and I'm sure most of you have watched the movie, um, Sandy changed, she went to the trouble to meet him halfway and turned into, a, you know, one of the uh, uh, the girls that the T-Birds had, right? Um, and then he turned into um, how Sandy was in the first place, you know? Not one of the T-Birds, he was willing to go the distance. And that's what Virgo is about. So... I would say it's not so much about what is yelled out and what is what is talked about. Um, it's more about the actions taken. So, because actions speak louder than words. So, let's not get stuck on this is what it seems like. This is, um, you know, my person is coming through as very sexual and they're... Um, they're very flirtatious with me. They're very playful. That really doesn't, to me, um, that doesn't speak volumes. Sp speaking volumes is the action, the practical matters, the day-to-day -day life. It's not about going out, having fun, flirting. Yes, that's more, Leo is more the flirtation. Um, it's more about the risks that take. And yes, to have fun, to go and have a drink, to go and... Um, Go to the Lunar Park, right? Go to have some fun, play, play some games, go to the casino. All these things are great, but it's more about the duties and about the daily, uh, our daily life. That's what, um, that's what would succeed in the long term. It's more about the practical matters and the day to day. And not so much about the flirtation because, you know, the excitement wears off quickly. It's can we live under the same roof? Can we meet halfway? Where doing the work within a relationship is concerned. So that's what we're looking at right now, energetically speaking, my dear friends. What can actually last, right? All right, I think we'll leave it there. I hope that you're all um, okay and you've made it well through this full moon in Aquarius. We are heading into eclipse season and let's hope that uh, what is eclipsed from our life, taken away from us, will make space for that new, that new cycle, that more healthy, more balanced, more harmonious, love connection that will complete us even though we need to be complete in our own selves in our own skin but finding also that other complete person not that person who's got a chip on their shoulder and they're hoping that we will fill that void and that uh, you know that m fix their mess up so self-love is very important as we all know and we all grow and learn through mistakes and through our experiences. So let's hope for new cycles, new understandings, new opportunities, my dear friends. And I am wishing you well. We do have some wonderful aspects towards the end of the end of the month, and we're coming up to those now. So there are opportunities. And wonderful surprises that we'll be seeing suddenly, even though we have the brakes pressed now, it's like pressing on the accelerator. Um, so come what may. Love and light. Thank you so much, everyone. And a special thanks to our patrons. I will be in touch. Don't forget to leave your yes, please, uh, in the comment section below. And if you're interested in a personal reading, Patrons do get a, a, a discount, so 
consider joining us on Patreon. We'd love to have you there. And uh, give me a couple of days. I will get back to your own personal yes, please love messages. So love and light, everyone. Talk to you soon. Much love.